This is a 10 minute preview of my GIMPED Premium video tutorial. To watch the full video, click on the link below and sign up for GIMPED Premium. Alright, so as you can see I have DeviantArt open and uh, this is actually where I get most of my uh, resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this download image area here and click copy link location because this is this download image actually opens up a large version of the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to GIMP click file open location and paste that URL into that click open and what will happen is GIMP is going to download the image and then open it up for me and there we go so now that we have our background we're going to go ahead and create the the blur illusion that I showed you earlier and to do that all we have to do is right click on this layer and click duplicate layer and click filters blur Gaussian blur. We're essentially creating the the blurry version of this image and we'll just blur it maybe maybe at 20 and click OK. Let that blur go through. Okay so now here is the blurry version here's the non blurry version. Now all we have to do is tell GIMP that we want the image to fade from this blurry to the non blurry as the image gets closer to us just like what an actual camera does and in order to emulate that we just have to figure out where the ground is coming at us the fastest which it would be right here right because this is about where the camera sits and it's kind of looking up so what we're going to do is we're going to just click on the blend tool we're going to right click on our layer and we're going to click add layer mask and we're going to set it to uh, we'll do black full transparency and click add and then we'll set our color to white. Make sure we're on the blend tool. Click on this and set it to foreground to transparent. And we're just gonna click, start here at this edge, and click and drag. Oh wait, that's not right. It's the other way around. Let's undo that. We actually wanna click where we want it to be um, completely blurry. So like where I, where I started, where I depressed on the mouse is where it's going to be um, start being at the blurriest point in the image. And wherever I release is going to be the final point in which the blending happens, which means that once I release this mouse, wherever I release it from there below it, it's going to be clear. And you'll see. So I'll release and you can see that it just kind of created a fade from this blur to the sharp and it, it just creates that illusion of depth of field much like what you would get from a camera. Now if you're not happy with what you get just hit Control Z to undo it. Uh, click on your blend tool and just try it again and just holding control and that'll actually lock the angle of vertical because you want it to be vertical. And see that looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. Now that we have two of our images in our final composition we're going to go ahead and put the barrel in as well. Now the great thing about the barrel image that I found is it's already already isolated from the background. You can't tell from here but if you click on the download image button here whenever it opens you'll notice it's transparent on the background. That green won't be in the image which means I don't even have to open this up and use the pads tool and trace it all out manually. It's ready to go. So if I right click on this download and click copy link location and then go over to GIMP. Well actually let's let's do this a different way. If you click download image and open this image up and let it make sure it's downloaded all the way, right click on it and click copy image. Go over to GIMP and then just hit um, paste which is edit paste. Paste as new layer it'll actually just drop it in as its own layer and look at that like I told you it's isolated perfectly so now of course we've got these three images floating around with no real sense of location or anything or size or anything for that matter so let's go ahead and organize these a bit first off of course the actual barrel needs to be underneath the guy in order to do that we're gonna just click on that layer and click on this down arrow and there we go and you'll notice I actually already made three layer groups for this one of the girl, one of the two images for the background, and one of the guy. 
And I did that because my recording software won't let me actually organize this when I'm recording. So I actually had to stop the video, make the groups, and then replay it. But to do to create a layer group, all you have to do is right click and click new layer group, and it works just like creating a new layer, and all you have to do is just drag the images that you want in that group on top of that layer group image. And it'll it'll add them to the layer group. It's really easy, I promise. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and and scale this massive, massive barrel down to a size that it needs to be. So just click on the scale tool, make sure we're linked, and just kind of scale this thing down. And here's a little hint. If you hide the clip, if you hide the clipboard, if you hide the layer that you're scaling, it'll actually hide the image and keep the preview open, which makes moving this thing around loads, loads easier. I'm actually going to hide the guy too and just kind of scale it down to something that you think works. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to darken these arms a little bit. They um they are pretty bright. And I guess I guess I didn't I guess I didn't account for how how well the dirt would actually show up on it. So, we're going to have to darken the arms just a little bit, just enough to be able to kind of help that dirt pop out. But with how bright our image is, we really actually needed it that way anyway for the, you know, for the actual rest of the body too. Unfortunately, the arms are just the brightest feature, but that's no big deal. So go ahead and click on the bucket fill tool, fill in the color black, and set the layer mode to overlay. And you'll notice it actually makes her as a whole darker. Now we don't want all of her darker, we just want her arms darker. So we're just going to use the layer mask. Right click and click add layer mask and set it to black full transparency and click add. Now click on your paintbrush tool and set it to white. And just zoom in and just start brushing in that dark color. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry about the edges, a lot of these edges because the um, the layer mask will only, or the layer itself will only affect what's in its group, which again is just just her. So the only the only time you have to watch for the edge is whenever it's an edge of the hand onto another part of her. See, like for example, we don't really want that shadow to be that dark. We can leave that as it is, but we do want this finger a little darker. So I'm just kind of brushing these details in. hide and show, shade before and after. Now watch what this does to this this rust color whenever I darken this. Look how much more red it makes it. That That's actually kind of a problem. We're going to have to tweak the color of that rust to look a little better now. But, you know, no biggie. Probably just have to remove more color from it to compensate. Okay. So that looks a little bit better. So just click on your rust layer and click colors, hue saturation, and just turn that saturation down a little further. Maybe the hue over. It's doing what I'm thinking it's doing. Yeah, it's changing. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to actually drop the opacity down on this a bit I think yeah there we go kinda give it some of that flesh color back but still make it look you know like it's actually there and I think the severity of this injury is a little a little a little extreme so we're gonna I think I'm gonna get rid of some of it so just color on the layer mask of that image itself on black and just kinda get rid of the details that you don't really want I don't really want any of this. I think that's too much. But I do want that little chunk there. So we'll go with that. There we go. That looks pretty good. So right click and click new layer. Oops, there we go. New layer. Hit OK. And fill it in with the color black and set that color to the layer mode overlay. This is very much like what we just did with him. 
then click add layer mask set it to black full transparency click add and just again with that splashy brush yeah see that looks like dirt that looks a lot more dirty so that we don't have too much of the same general color for the dirt kind of just mixing it up a little bit here and just kind of add the dirt as you see fit and kind of try to get some smaller particles in there too and you know change your brushes around try different ones see what you can get to create the result that you like you know maybe add a little filth on her there too okay that looks a lot better okay so with that I'm pretty happy with that and you'll notice what I was doing there is I was actually adjusting the 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 pattern layer opacity up and down to kind of tweak how visible it is and I was doing the same thing with the overlay layer just it, it's a great and simple and fast way to just fine-tune everything in your image at one time or everything on your layer at one time so I felt that the the burn layer as a whole was just too bright or too visible so I toned it down a bit so that I could then switch over to my overlay layer and create more more fine details with it so there we go okay